Today we're going to work with some hold keyframes. First let's make a sources folder. Click in the uh, click on the create a new folder icon and name the folder sources. With that folder selected, choose file, import, file, and we'll find our illustrator file that we'd like to import and there it is. Let's make a new composition for this. Click in the blank area so that our new composition does not end up in the sources folder. And let's choose the NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel preset and let's make it, uh, oh I don't know, three seconds long. So your time should be 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0. Okay, that is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Leave the background color black. Call it hold keys. Hit OK. That's a new composition. Drag the at symbol into the hold keys comp. And where is it, we ask? Well, there it is. If we hit the transparency grid, we can see the symbol because in Illustrator, it was black. If you've got something that's black on a black background, hit the transparency grid so that you can see it. Now we're going to move this thing around the composition in a uh, reasonably random fashion. We like it in the center for now, so let's make a keyframe. We're going to use position and scale keyframes. So with the layer selected, you hit P, hold down Shift, hit S. So now we see both of them. Do we like it there? Yes, but we'd like it a little bigger maybe about that big, maybe move it down a bit. Let's set a keyframe there and let's say that we like it there at the end as well. So let's move to roughly here and we'll just add a keyframe right there that just happens to match the one that we're at because we didn't change anything. Now let's go back here maybe to uh, there. Let's move it and scale it go here uh, let's make it every 15 seconds so just grab these two 15 I didn't mean 15 seconds I meant 15 frames how about over here uh, let's go over there maybe scale it down a bit move over here drag it down there scale it up a bit move over here Let's try oh, no, there, scale it up some more, move to here, uh, let's see what looks good, maybe over there, make it very small, and let's play that, see what we get. RAM preview is the rightmost button. Okay silly but what can you do let's see I think I like this one over here that's a little better okay that's a little better now then let's say that we didn't want it moving around like that that we wanted it to be at this position and then at well, this position then here then here then here 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 we would use something called hold keyframes. To make hold keyframes out of a bunch of keyframes like this, well, you need to select all the keyframes. So you could select position just by clicking the word and then click the word scale with shift held down. And now you've got all the keyframes selected. Here's how you make them hold keyframes. You right click or control click on the uh, any keyframe and choose toggle hold keyframe. When you click they change into a different kind of keyframe. Let's see what that looks like. That's what we wanted. Okay. The way that this works is at this point the ad is this size and for every frame after that keyframe 
it holds that size and position. Once you move to the next keyframe, it changes it and then it holds it. So it's change and hold, change and hold, change and hold, change and hold, and change and hold. Okay? Now, the uh, one thing you should notice is that when the at symbol is very large, it's fuzzy. Well, it's an Illustrator file, it's a vector file, but why should it be fuzzy? Shouldn't it be sharp? Well, After Effects rasterizes everything in its path. It, uh, well, it turns it basically into PSDs, Photoshop, whatever, from, a, from that point of view. It rasterizes stuff, whereas an Illustrator file is a vector file. If you want this vector file to look sharp again, you need to rasterize it at every size, not just at the original size that it came in, which is what After Effects does by default. It brings it in at its 100% size, rasterizes it, and then leaves it there so that when you scale it up like this to what, 635%, it gets fuzzy. So you need to, as I said, continuously rasterize it. To do that, you press this little button right down here. This Right down here we have our little button and this is the continuously rasterization button or the continuous rasterization button right below the little sunburst here. See? For vector layer continuously rasterize. Click the button and it's sharp. Switch it off. It's fuzzy. Switch it on. It's sharp. Isn't that special? Do a RAM preview and it's sharp all the way around. That's absolutely terrific. Aren't you happy about that? I know I am. Moving right along, let's say we wanted to change the color of this boringly black at symbol here. Uh, by the way, this symbol was created uh, in Illustrator and converted to outlines so that this symbol will appear no matter what fonts you have on your computer. If you don't have the original font on your computer and this is not in outlines, uh, After Effects would not see it as it's supposed to look. So if you're not sure what computer will be using this file, uh, if it might go to somebody who doesn't have all your fonts, be sure you make outlines of it. Save your original, of course, so that if you have to change it later, you can do that in Illustrator. If the client comes back to you and says, I want to change the font, you have the ability to do that. But it's just good practice to make something to outlines and bring that in in this fashion. So let's change the color, as I said we were going to do. Make sure that our layer is selected here, and this time we're going to find it from the effects and presets. The effect we're looking for is called fill. So right in here, type in F I L L. And under generate, we want generate fill. We don't want these other guys uh, today. So click fill, double click it actually, and it fills the A with its default fill color which is red, which is nice. And now we can actually bring back the black. There we go. And let's change the color of that, but let's say we like it at red right now. We need to make a keyframe for this because we're going to change it throughout our composition, so make a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch next to color. Now if you want to see it here, you could hold down Shift and E, maybe, but the fastest way is to simply hit the U key. The U key gives you all of the keyframes that you've made for that layer. It's a very handy one. If you hit U again, it closes all the keyframes. If you hit U one more time, it brings them all back. That's a good way to clean up your layout if you have a bunch of things you don't want to see at that moment. A bunch of keyframes you don't want to see. Okay, so we like this keyframe here. But let's say we want it to hold in the same way that all the other ones are holding. You select the keyframe for fill, right click or control click on it, hit toggle hold keyframe. Now by default all other keyframes we make for this layer now will also be hold keyframes. That's just the way it works. Actually let's test a the theory here. I've never tested this before. I know that all of the ones to the right of the keyframe will be hold keyframes. Let's just test that right now. Let's change our color to lime. And it's a hold keyframe. 
That's a different kind of hold keyframe there, but if you want to know more about that, look in the help. Let's just try to make a keyframe to the left of that one. Note how the color is indicated here. Very useful. Let's try to make a keyframe over here. See what happens. Make it yellow. Ah, that is not a hold keyframe because this one has a diamond on the left side, so everything to the left of it is going to be a regular keyframe, but it's square on the right, so everything to the right of it will be a hold keyframe. Something to keep in your back pocket to know that. Let's undo. Command Z, Command Z, and we're back to work. Move to the next keyframe. Oh, by the way, the shortcut for that is K. K, K, and back is J. So, J for back, K for forward. That'll take you to the next marker or keyframe, or it depends on what you've got visible. If you have the keyframes visible, it takes you to the next keyframe. Let's change the color. Make it, oh, I don't know, yellow, K. Make it pink. K, or magenta for you purists, sort of a magenta. Uh, let's go to a teal, K, let's make it uh, green, and at the end we want it to be red again, so let's select, copy, our first keyframe that is, over here, and hold down shift, lock, there we are, shift takes us, shift snaps the current time indicator and paste. There it is. Red at the beginning, red at the end. Let's see what that looks like. Wonderful. 